to call her name servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son.
Almighty God, merciful Father. Since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The first reading of the fourth Sunday of Easter, also Confirmation Sunday, is from Acts chapter 2. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of the bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the produce to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. sheep, but have not returned to 
the shepherd and overseer of your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise.
Nathan, David, the handful of you gathered here, and those of you listening at home, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So confirmation, not a sacrament, although for the first time in your young lives, you will receive the sacrament, the sacrament, the sacrament of the altar, the Lord's Supper, the Holy Eucharist, communion for the very first time. And because of this uh, virus, you didn't get the opportunity, like uh, most of the other students have throughout the year, to practice. Now, it's not hard. You eat, you drink. That's the sacrament. It's in a nice chalice or in the individual cup, which is probably what you'll have today. Just unleavened bread, just like you were at home. You eat and you drink. That's what you and our Lord would have us do. So don't worry about it, okay? Most of you, both of you boys have been up here many times and you see what we do. It's okay. But the important thing for all of us to remember is the eating and the drinking. Take eat. Take drink. Why? This is for you. So that really is the high point, uh, not only of the divine service every time we gather, but for you this day. And really, although sometimes it's hard for us to remember this, it's really one of the high points of your life. Now, we'll celebrate this all the time, and sort of, you, know, you won't think of it in that way, but it's a big day. I wish it could be bigger. I wish the church could be, and it would be for the people if it wasn't for this uh, pestilence. That's the word I like to use, pestilence. It's a good, nasty little word describing what this is, right? It's a pestilence that has befallen us. God's still in charge. We need to ask ourselves what can we learn from this. Is he calling us to repentance? So he's always calling us to repentance. And he uses these things to do it. Repent from what? Well, repent from what we are. We uh, hear in those readings a theme that runs through them. Peter in Acts. And this time of year, I mentioned it over the last couple of Sundays, that we drop out the Old Testament reading and put in the readings from Acts just for a few more weeks and we'll engage the Old Testament again um, once we hit the Pentecost. But we hear today that you, as the apostles went out and preached what I'm doing today, and baptized and distributed and gave out the Lord's Supper in, in Acts and called the breaking of the bread, that the people devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the prayers, that's the church service, that's coming together formally for prayer, not sitting at home and praying, although you should do that way, all of us should. All of us should. But they devoted themselves to the prayers, the teaching of the apostles, and the breaking of the bread. That is the Lord's Supper. In a few minutes, you're going to come up and make a promise. I promise we talked about this over the internet on Tuesday via Zoom, which has been mildly entertaining to kind of see you in your natural habitat, which is a little scary, um, to see, uh, uh, wonder actually if Nathan was actually breathing at times because of the internet lag, because uh, he lives, I mean, this is rural enough um, in, in, in compared to the great cities of the world, the quad cities, Rock Island, but you live out where? Point Center? You know, where is that? You know, do you, you, you have power? You know, you know, you know Yes, you do. Yes, it's, it's the model world. But yes, you can definitely notice the lag. And every now and then, you really couldn't hear you say anything. Or it sounded like uh, one of the adults from uh, the old uh, Charlie Brown television show. That's what you said. You probably don't even know what that is, but everybody else listening will. It's my age or, or older. I'm like you were speaking through a horn. But we made it. We made it work these last few weeks. David with his dog and his lights. And uh, always something interesting on David's shirts. David, who's also very bright, both these boys are very bright. But we talked about those vows. And those vows, which, you know, um, start out by you saying, you know, yes, yes. But then we get to the heavy ones, you know, like, and we've all said them, everybody else sitting here except for you two. You know, 
I would rather die. I would rather suffer death than fall away from his faith. And all we can make and say is yes with the grace of God. And we talk about, we'll make the promise about to diligently use the means of grace, to devote yourself, right from that, to the teaching, to the breaking of the bread, to the prayers, to meet with your brothers and sisters and receive the gifts of the Lord, to receive and hear again the promises and the forgiveness, to receive that heavenly food that has sustained you throughout your life. This really is the heart of confirmation. Not so much with you two boys and what we as the adults and our, our siblings, older siblings, gathered here uh, have and listening at home have, uh, um, have done throughout the years or are going to do. It's not about that. It's about Christ and what he has done. So your parents were used by God. I was used by God to teach you and to hand over the faith, as your parents have throughout the years and will continue to do so throughout the years, as you two boys will one day, if God blesses you with wife and children. You will, more so than anybody else in your child's life, you as a father will hand over the faith to your children. God will have you do that. So it's not so much about, you know, doing those things, though again, as I said, it's about Christ. Who has used all these people, me, your parents, to bring you to him. That's really what we celebrate here. That he has been faithful to you. The Lord is my shepherd, we say in that great psalm. The great psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd. We hear in the gospel, do not in the gospel, gospel reading, gospel reading. We hear that not only is he the shepherd, but he's also the door. Isn't that weird? He's a lot of things. But that he's telling us something. Not only do you have to go through the door. Remember, if you try to get into the in, 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 in any other way, you're a robber and a thief, and you're going to be treated by a, as a robber and a thief. And you can hear what's coming in John chapter 14 when he will say, I am the way, the truth, the life, no one comes to the Father but by me. Now that doesn't mean he doesn't want anybody to come in. He wants everybody to, to come in. He died for everybody. But if you are going to stand in the presence of God, if you're going to enter into that sheepfold, the only way to do it is through the blood of Jesus. The only way. You have to be covered with his blood if you're going to stand in the presence of the Holy God. Because you have to be holy. And only in Christ are you perfectly holy. So again, this day isn't about what you are going to do for God. And we pray you're going to do great things for God. It's about what God has done for you. He has not only led you to the gates, but he brings you into it through himself. That's why you're saved. Now when we devote ourselves throughout our lives, to the apostles' teaching. That's where we're attacked. First thing that happens is we maybe stop coming to church regularly. And we start justifying that in our mind because we start comparing ourselves to the world around us, which is always dangerous. And the world around you wants to tell you what to believe, what to do, because it's the domain of Satan. He does not want you to be sitting here in the pew today. He does not want you to receive this gift that you are about to receive. And if you just did it once and were done, he'd be happy with that. Very you happy. No. So the world's going to teach you. Satan's going to teach you. Once you cut yourself off from the teachings, from the breaking of the bread, from coming together for prayer, for church. Hey. You'll start looking at your neighbor, and you'll find those people, and we all do it. Those people who are worse than you. Now, you two boys are pretty bad. Don't worry, everybody else in the room is just as bad as you, so don't feel bad. I can single them out as well. But I know you two boys pretty well after spending a few years with your neighbor. It's like I've known you for 10 years, because you sat 
in with your sisters as well when they were going through for two years. So four years you've been at this. You teach it next year, I'll take a year off, okay? That's what we'll do, okay? So you two boys, we talk about this all the time as we're learning about the commandments, as we're learning about why Jesus has to be the gate, we talk about what we are, sinners. That as much as we love our parents and our sisters, and I'll bet, I'm not asking you to confess right now, but I'll bet that as these weeks go on when we shelter in place, that it gets a little more tense. We get a little tired of seeing each other. The house gets a little small after a while. And maybe you know, you're like that pinball, if you remember those things. You probably, so weird thing is you guys have probably paid, played pinball electronically. You know, I played the real machine, you know, that you shook and, 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 and you know, the machine would lock up because it was called tilt. But that's what you like. You like that little steel ball bouncing off each other and, you know, and, and it's only going to get worse. Especially when the weather warms up and you can't go hang out with your friends. And by God's grace, that'll end soon. Pray for that. But we talk about these things, you know. How the people that we love the most, the people that gave us life, the people that are our own, are our own flesh and blood, we uh, hurt. And they hurt us. And we call that sin. And there are many things. That's just one example of things we've talked about. So yeah, you two boys, pretty messed up. Just like everybody else in this room, just like everybody else listening. And there's no way you can stand in front of God if not the shepherd lead you. And the shepherd bring you to the door, which he is, through his blood. But the nice thing is, is that takes the burden off. You don't have to, you don't have to compare yourself to your neighbor anymore. Think, well, I'll do that. I'm golden. That's what you do when you cut yourself off. You just start looking at your neighbor and say, well, I don't do that. I'm doing well. And you're never going to find somebody that's better than you because that makes you feel good. You know, you two boys look at your sisters and say, well, I'm not like them. Your sisters are actually quite sweet. But that's not something that happens with sisters. Yeah. Your sisters are very sweet. But uh, anyway, I'm sure they have their things to do. I'm just messing. Nobody's ratted out girls, so I'm just saying. So, uh, but anyway, that's what you do. You compare yourself to those people. That's what Satan wants you to do, because then all of a sudden you don't need Jesus. I'm doing okay because I don't do that. Whatever that is. Then you're a thief in a robber. You have to come to the gate. And what we celebrate today, as he will say, if you take eat, this is for you, as you are reminded of your baptism, and you will put these candles over the baptism you want to remind you of where God put that promise upon you. The Lord keeps your coming in and you're going out from this time forth and forevermore. He isn't kidding when he says that. He is going to do that and have. He will keep your going in and your coming out from this time forth and even forevermore. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. You will suffer. Heard that in the readings today. And I wish we could give you a better world, boys. But it doesn't look like it's going to get any better anytime soon. But you know the whole story. It's going to be, I fear, far more difficult for you than it ever was for me to cling to that word, to cling to those promises. Open hostility against what you will confess in just a few minutes as you stand and we stand and confess the creed best of faith, as the church has done for a couple of thousand years. Open hostility, and we're seeing it now. We're pushing the envelope here with this tiny, just so you hear it at home, this tiny little group of people that we have here, all wearing masks, keeping our social distance. We could have somebody knock on the door and say, break it up. And then you're going to go into the workforce, by God's grace, where you say certain things that we confess and believe, and you're probably, you're probably already learning this in school. That if you don't say certain things, or agree to certain things, you are going to be not just laughed at by your peers, but be in real trouble. It's a frightening world. But the Lord is your shepherd. He will guide you every step of the way. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, which is every day for us, what do we fear? Nothing. Nothing. He has been faithful to you. 
Now, it is my custom, I don't know why I started this, but I just pick verses to compliment both adults and children. Unless they have something that's very near and dear to their family. Neither of your boys uh, said you had anything like that. Um, so, your two verses are from Jeremiah, verses 20, uh, chapter 23, verses 5 and 6. That's for you, David. And then for you, Nathan, John chapter 1, 48 and 49. Let me start with David. We'll go to John with that word. Okay. Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king, and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. That's a great verse. Two verses, actually. He makes a promise, God speaking through David, your name to David. And then every time we gather, usually about uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, the, the second to last Sunday in Advent, we sing that great hymn, that great ancient, it's about a thousand years old, and it's uh, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And each one of those stanzas of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel has a name of Jesus from the Old Testament. And you hear one of those names here, the branch, the branch. Jesus is the branch. Behold, the days are coming. Now, David, this verse will be important to you. Think about that. It's actually important to all of us, but it'll be important to you as you grow up and you sing that hymn every year and think about that verse. And this verse comes up quite frequently in the life of the church. We hear the promises of Christ. But the last, the last part of verse 6, which goes right to what Jesus is saying in the gospel, the Lord is our righteousness. The name of that branch of Christ our Lord, Emmanuel, name of our church, God who walked among us, his name is the Lord is our righteousness. In your baptism, you were covered with the Lord is our righteousness. So you can stand before God. We all can stand before God. Why? Because he is our righteousness. He is our holiness. And you will always know who you really are. You'll have the backstage view like we all do. You'll have a guilty conscience like we all do. And yet you will run to Jesus. And remember that he is your righteousness. That's why, as I said earlier, it's so important to not listen to the world that says, hey, you're doing okay, but listen to Jesus. Who says, you have to come through my blood because you're a sinner. And there's no other way. It's glorious because it's easy. He did it all. He bore our punishment. He bore our sin. Paid for it. And so now we're people of light. So David, yes. And gee, why do you think I picked that verse? Your name. It's a great name. Now you, a little trickier. Because uh, Nathan is a, is a shortened form of a really cool Hebrew name. Uh, it's a verb and a noun. And so I'll read John 1, 48 and 49. Nathaniel said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Now that is the call, and Jesus begins to call the apostles. And he has this interesting dialogue with your namesake, Nathanael. Um, it gets shortened often to Nathan. And Nathan is a Hebrew verb that means give or get. You want to think of it as a noun. And the L at the end is the short form of Elohim, which means you are a gift of God. I won't ask your sisters to give their opinion on that, but your parents would look at you and say, yes, you are a gift of God, as would your sister. Most of them. Most of them. Of course they would. As is, as is David. A gift. Every one of us is a 
stuff get hooked up. And it's interesting with Nathan, Nathaniel, the gift of God does. What you are going to do today, as he is called, you were called, you were called in your baptism. That's how you know you are a disciple. That's how we all know. God called you. The shepherd led you to the water and said, drink. And in that water, you were covered with his holiness, is why we, which is why we dress cloth. And when you were dressed in white, you were wearing white. I don't remember you, David, but I suspect you were wearing white. Your mom's not in your head, but yeah. It doesn't matter, because that's just a symbol of what's actually happened. You are being washed, you are all of a sudden, you come out of that water, and the Lord is our righteousness, is now your righteousness. You are holy, perfectly so. So, you confess like Nathaniel did. You are called like Nathaniel was. And the last thing Nathaniel says, after he has this interesting dialogue, and we won't take the time to unpack it this morning, because she just says, you know, before, before you even knew, I knew you. I knew you when you were over there, when you were over there. He knows everything about you, about all of you, about all of us. We have no secrets from God. Even those things you think you don't want anybody ever to find out. That's probably not you two boys, it will be one day. But it's probably most of us adults. Our things in our past things we did when we weren't much older than you. Think, why on earth did I do that? Why on earth would I have said those things or done those things? God knows. Absolutely no secrets from him, none. And yet he is still called you. So Nathaniel is right to say, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. Jesus Christ, you are the Son of God. You are the King. He is. And remember his throne, which makes you an heir, which brings you into the kingdom. His throne, he has to be nailed to it if he's going to stay on it. His cross, his crown of thorns. That's your king. So in these verses, you two boys see God being faithful to you. He called you. And in that calling, now we confess, which is what we will do today. And the last thing is the last thing Jesus said. Truly, truly. When Jesus said that, pay attention. You've heard me say this before. He doesn't speak like a prophet. He certainly doesn't speak like a pastor. He's not one. He isn't a great prophet, but he's God. All I can say is this is what Jesus said, which is a very good thing. All the prophet can say is, thus says the Lord. Jesus can look you in the eye and say, I say to you, or truly, truly. When he says that to me, he says, okay, pay attention. This is the truth. And there is no other. Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, and those voices that are trying to pull you away, thieves and robbers. And the sheep did not listen to them. Don't listen to those voices. Listen to your shepherd. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved, and will go in and out and find pasture. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Satan wants you to not be found. And then finally this. This great promise to all of us, but especially you two boys here today. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Not 60, 70, 80 years that you pray you have. Or you, even if it's short, you pray that doesn't matter, but you never know. You never know. But Christ came not to just give us 30, 40, 50, 60 years of, of a good life in this world, which is he came to give you abundant life, eternal life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is you, David, Nathan, and the rest of us. And we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A life beyond this life. A glorious life, a glorious resurrection. He came to give us true life, which we do not know. And it's now yours. Would you partake of these gifts? Would you confess these things? 
on this. God bless you both for this. God bless you both and your families and all those listening. And I'm going to make an Easter proclamation. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So I'll invite you all to rise and we will confess our faith using the word of the Nicene. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten and his Father before all the world, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven. And was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, who suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to glory to judge both the living and the dead, his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Lord and giver of life. Proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. The congregation may be, may be seated as I invite the Nathan and David Ford to the right. Beloved of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, as the Apostles, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You both have been baptized and baptized in the Christian faith, according to our Holy Spirit. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also but whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Now you boys, lift up your heart, therefore, to the God of all grace, and enjoy to be given the answer to why thou hast me in the name of the Lord. Yeah, we're reading the verse today. And then I'm going to go back and read the verse again. Okay? Alright? Got it? Alright. Do you in this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you? You renounce the devil, if so, say yes, I renounce him. You renounce all his work, if so, say yes, I renounce that. You renounce all his ways, if so, say yes, I renounce them. In the congregation, uh, both at home and, and people gathered here from home, we have the next response to the letter of verse 32. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from that he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church. The resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. You two boys hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God, and so say, I do. You have confessed the doctrine of the evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from the scriptures, which you have learned to know from the small catechism to be faithful and true, and so say, I do. You intend to hear the word of God as your 
receive the Lord's Supper faithfully, if so, say, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the Word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? If so, say, I do by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession of the church, and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? If so, say, I do by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessings and his sacraments, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion on the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's go to the Lord. Take your hands, O Lord, the Almighty God, Father of all living Jesus Christ, who has given you the birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, grant you with this grace to help us all. Amen. Take your bread, Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous nation. And he shall reign as king and do it wisely, and he shall execute justice. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will dwell securely. As it is his name, as it is called, the Lord is our Lord. Amazing Jesus, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, granting you, with his grace, the life everlasting. Nathaniel said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you when you were under the fig tree, I saw him. Nathaniel answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Let us pray. Let us pray. How much time we need to be blessed with that. Lord God and Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these your sons to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess your saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious in the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renewing them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance, with the faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan, and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines, that they may remain faithful. In hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him. Learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor, and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Peace be with you both. Amen. Let's all pray. Take my day again to be with us in this
why the congregation arrived at the prayer of the church. Bid by our shepherd, let us come before his throne of grace and prayer on behalf of all the people of great here in Jerusalem. Blessed shepherd, you established the church with your sacrificial death and mighty resurrection. Grant us devotion that we may abide the teaching of the apostles and honor the fellowship of the church. Guard us against all enemies of your word and keep us within the care of your flock and staff forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty Shepherd, you hold in your hand all the might of men, and you hold the counsel of those who would govern your people. Grant to us good government and good leaders honor your purpose, protect your people, serve your cause of justice, and defend our liberty against all threats. Give them wisdom and moderation in their pandemic response. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Shepherd, you love the world enough to shed your blood, and you desire that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Inspire and equip your church and your ministers to speak faithfully and boldly your word, and bless all those who serve us on your behalf. Bless us especially when we are persecuted for the faith, but suffer for the sake of the good that honors you and is obedient to your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Shepherd, you have clothed us with Christ's righteousness and taught us to love all that is good, right, and true. Bless all artisans and, art and artists, composers and musicians, craftsmen and writers, that they may employ their skills for your glory and serve the gospel, and that the arts may testify to your saving death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, your wounds are our healing, and your voice calls us to you in time of need. Hear us on behalf of all those who suffer in body and mind, who, who grieve those whom they love, and to whom death draws near. We especially pray for our brother in Christ, Jack, and our Lynn. We pray for our brother Ron, who has been in surgery this week, for our homebound, that they may not fall into loneliness and despair, and all who are crying out to you. And those we now name in our hearts. Grant them healing according to your will, grace to sustain them in the day of trouble, and hope of new and everlasting life to come. Be with the unemployed and distraught, and return them to health and livelihood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Shepherd, you seek out those who have fallen and restore the sinner to repentance. Send forth your spirit to rekindle faith in the hearts of those who have fallen away from the truth, or have been overcome by temptation and sin. Bring good from ill and increase in all the hunger for your word and the recognition of our need, that many may be gathered to your flock and that the church doors are opened wide again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Giving shepherd, you have not withheld anything from us, but empty yourself fully upon the cross that we might be saved. Do our hearts with such devotion and teach us such generosity that we may bring to you tithes and offering of a grateful heart and serve our neighbor in need. Resources that have supplied to us so abundantly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Good Shepherd, you set your table among us in the presence of our enemies. Hear us because we are beset by so many false voices and tempted by so many false gospels. Help us to hear your voice and to abide safely in your word that remains forever. Equip us with your spirit so that we may receive your body and blood with faith and a repentant heart. We give you thanks for David and Nathan today who have received sacrament for the first time. Continue to uphold them in the faith until that day they stand before your throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O great good shepherd, we pray you to hear your sheep and answer our prayers with mercy, granting us those things profitable for us and our salvation, and keeping from us all things harmful. We live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Once again, at this time, when we would normally collect the offering and we thank um, the members of the congregation for their continued generosity and the devotion to you for the time. Um, again, uh, at this time, we will sing the offertory, so please remain standing. <laughs>
Those of you at home, the distribution will be 851 auditories in a box. Box. Box.
us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that in the day of your coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated for our hymn to depart, shepherd and tender leaders.
see us and let us see you. You of uh, all shapes of telephone, you can call in, you can sit near you, you can sit with us and ask questions and stuff like that. Uh, but those are all available on Zoom. You shouldn't need uh, any password or anything like that. Um, uh, if you uh, um, need instructions or help logging on to those things, call me. I'll hook you up with somebody that can help you um, uh, walk you through that. And you're using this device and set the phone, you should be able to figure it out. We help with others. So uh, with that, I'm going to just all sort of developing uh, day by day, and uh, uh, we're adjusting as, as we can.